Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dappy Diversity. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what's going on in the Ethereum space right now. And this is kind of a new video style that I'm gonna try out on my channel where I'm kind of talking about, you know, what's happening in the Ethereum space right now, what's happening with blockchain technology in general. Um, and I'm also going to kind of answer some questions that I get from you all, the viewers, to my email inbox towards the end of the video. So stick around and see if I have responded to any of your questions that you have sent me over email. So before we jump into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is kind of catch you guys up on what's going on with the Ethereum space right now, with the Ethereum technology in general. Um, and so I wanted to kind of, you know, mention uh, the first major thing which happened recently is, you know, DevCon. So DevCon 4 uh, just happened at the end of October, the beginning of November. Uh, and so if you don't know what DevCon is, it's basically a big Ethereum development conference. Uh, it happened in Prague this year. Um, and there's some cool, you know, big announcements um, at DevCon. And I want to kind of talk about that. So the first big thing, you know, that came out of DevCon was, you know, Vitalik. Um, talking about Ethereum 2.0. So I've actually got a video pulled up here uh, that you can look at if you want to, where we're kind of talking about some of the things that are happening in the next implementation of Ethereum, or so the next version, Ethereum 2.0. Um, and, you know, the video talks a lot about proof of stake, which is something people have uh, been talking about a lot. It's also called Casper. So proof of stake is different from Ethereum's, you know, consensus algorithm right now. So if you're not familiar with what a consensus algorithm is, it's the mechanism by which the entire Ethereum network agrees that they have, you know, copies of the same data whenever it's, you know, confirming transactions on the network, you know, because the blockchain is a distributed, you know, peer to peer network of nodes, each, no each node in the network is trying to confirm that uh, each, you know, node has the same copy of the data. And right now we're on, on a proof of work um, based consensus algorithm that's based on mining. You know, you hear about mining Ethereum. That's what that's talking about. Um, so proof of stake is a different consensus algorithm um, that moves away from the current proof of work consensus algorithm. Um, and you can watch that video uh, where Vitalik talks about that to learn more. So other things that we're kind of talking about with Ethereum 2.0 is scalability. You know, right now, something that uh, it makes it hard for Ethereum to be used on a, on a massive scale by like a big um, application that has, you know, all kinds of transactions happening all the time is it's, you know, transactions per second. So, you know, uh, is actually a limitation of, they call it a layer one, the actual Ethereum blockchain itself. Um, it can only process so many transactions per second. It's the same problem with like Bitcoin, the same problem with lots of others. And, uh, you know, that's something they talk about, sharding being a potential uh, way of improving that. So essentially, sharding, what it would do is, you know, take the current responsibility that belongs to, you know, the entire network or large parts of the network and, and shards them and it creates that responsibility and distills it down or delegates it to smaller parts of the network that still, you know, act in a very decentralized way, act in a very, um, you know, very secure way without the entire network having to perform every single, you know, potential operation. And that's something they're talking about. So lots of other improvements, like uh, you can see on the video, uh, virtual machine improvements, um, Cross contract logic improvements of protocol economics. I encourage you to watch the video to hear it straight from Vitalik himself because he's going to do a lot better job of explaining it than I would. <laughs> um, so, anyways, <laughs> other thing that happened at DevCon was a big sing along. Um, you can watch that on the video right here as well. Uh, one cool thing that I wanted to note um, is MetaMask coming out with a mobile client. So, uh, if you're familiar with Ethereum development, you've watched my videos, you've seen me use MetaMask a lot. And, you know, MetaMask is typically used as a Chrome browser extension. Like you can see it up here. 
where I'll interact with dApps and uh, you know send ether back and forth um, with with MetaMask, the the Chrome client. And now MetaMask is coming out with a mobile client. So it's not available just yet, as you can see here in the tweet, um, but it will be very soon. So watch out for that. All right, so that's it for you know a few quick updates. I don't want to go too long with that. Um, the next thing I want to do is answer some questions that I get from you all out of my email inbox. Um, so I get a lot of emails. So if you have tried to email me and I haven't been able to respond back, I apologize. My email inbox is very busy. So I'm trying this out though, where uh, I respond to emails um, on my YouTube videos. So if you all have a question you want me to answer, uh, you might it might be better if I can try to answer it this way over over YouTube videos. So I'm gonna jump into that right now. I'll uh, actually just pull up uh, my email here off screen and try to respond to a couple of these. So the first one comes from Samuel. So Samuel asks, he says, "Hey, I hope you're doing great. I hope you find some time to reply to my email." My name is Samuel. So I'm a, I'm a computer science student. Uh, I've never been interested in Bitcoins or blockchain until I started watching your videos. Well, thank you very much. Um, so I, I do not understand why gas is needed to perform transactions. That's a great question. So that's actually going back to uh, what I just talked about a second ago with Ethereum, which is proof of work. So right now, uh, you know, Ethereum is essentially like a globally distributed computer. So a bunch of different computers run together to maintain this public network. And, you know, blockchains and, and cryptocurrency and all this kind of stuff, it's, it's all about kind of economics and incentives. And so if I'm going to participate in running a network, you know, why would I be? So right now, the incentive structure for me to participate in the Ethereum network by, you know, giving my computer to, to machine time to operate the network is that I can get paid. And that's what proof of work is about. If I become a miner to help run the network, I could potentially get paid to do that. Um, and that's what it's for. So that's what gas is for. That cost gets passed on to people who are using the network. So if I want to send you Ether, I have to pay to do that. And that payment um, is, is given as a reward to the miners who are actually participating in maintaining the network. So I hope that helps, Samuel. Um, so moving on to another question. Let's see here. So Chris asks, um, let's see here. First of all, thank you so much for the great content, free and available for everyone. You're welcome, Chris. Um, your videos are great, awesome resources. So he's a new developer. Uh, just six, seven months of full stack JavaScript, some Python and C, C sharp. Um, after watching your 10 minute video responding to a 19 year old who had a question on where to start, I was wondering what your perspective would be on block, oh, on blockchain stacks like the Dow Stacks Hackers Kit. That's a great question. Uh, so Chris, I'll pull this up right here. So what Chris is asking about is um, this thing called the Dow Stack Hackers Kit. And so, uh, let's see here, he has more questions. He says, it's an easy way to bootstrap a DAP project. Um, but even after watching my tutorial videos, my tutorial videos, it's, he's having a difficult time figuring out what the purpose or benefit of something like this would be. So the organization and people behind the project are well respected. Um, and just wanted to know if something that would be good for building projects, basically. So it's a great question, Chris. Um, I think it's a good tool. Uh, so I was looking at this. Uh, so the DAO Stack Hackers Kit is one. Another one that I'll pull up here uh, is like the Aragon uh, organization. Basically, they have uh, some boilerplate uh, kits that are used for creating DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. But also they're just tools for like building dApps in general. Um, so basically, a lot of what they'll do is they'll kind of create proprietary ways of spinning up like test blockchains and UIs that already have like Web3 integrated into them. Um, and they just kind of come with like kits where you can, you know, build and deploy smart contracts, already have a UI kind of baked into them. Um, and they take a lot of the development or they at least try to take a lot of the uh, difficulty of 
you're you know, plugging everything in yourself. It's kind of a way of bootstrapping the project. So I would say check them out. Um, you know, if you've never used something like that before, I would try it. Um, you know, if you find that you need more, you know, configuration to uh, be able to do something yourself without, uh, you know, someone else kind of making those choices for you, or if you like you know exactly what you want. That might be better for you to just kind of build everything on your own, but I would say try them. All right, so the last question I want to answer today um, comes from uh, Kelvin. So Kelvin says, um, he's a fan of the YouTube channel, and thank you for the work that you're doing. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so I'm interested to become a blockchain developer. However, I get confused with the flow of videos. Would you recommend... So how would you recommend me start from basic to advanced videos? All right, that's a good question. So just for you, Kelvin, and also others, because I get this question a lot, I went ahead and organized some of these videos into a playlist that you all can check out. So I went over uh, and actually created this. Go to a playlist on my YouTube channel. And I created a new one called Start Here. So actually, if you go to my channel page uh, and you scroll down, I created a Start Here playlist. So I'm going to go actually click on this. I would recommend starting with, you know, one of my most popular videos, uh, which is called, you know, uh, how to build Ethereum DAP decentralized application development tutorial. Um, you can see this kind of thumbnail it floats around a lot over the internet. This video also has a full length article associated with it where you can like read out all the code, you know, instructions step by step as well as watch the video. Um, you can also download the code from GitHub at each point in the video, so it's really easy to follow, or at least other people tell me it's easy to follow. Um, so yeah, I was right there. Uh, I got another video that's an introduction to the Solidity programming language. Uh, I also have a video that kind of talks about you know how to build a DAP in 20 minutes. It's supposed to get you kind of introduced to uh, you know talking to the blockchain with Web3.js without a big framework. Um, I got some other kind of videos on just basics of blockchain development and learning blockchain programming. I've also got this eight hour code your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum video, uh, which shows you how to do, you know, build your own ICO and ERC20 tokens step by step. Um, all the codes available on GitHub as well. And the last one on there is Introduction to Web3.js. Um, that's part of a bigger series, but I went ahead and just put the first video in there uh, as a starting point. So if you all, I uh, hope that helps Kelvin. And if anyone else is curious about the same question about where to start on the YouTube channel, you can just go back to my page um, and click on that playlist right there. And that should give you a good starting point. If there's anything else on my channel that you all think should be included on that, please let me know. And if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to email me. I've got my email address down in the description of this video below. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you all liked this video. Uh, if you like this kind of just update style video where I talk about what's happening in the Ethereum space and also answer your questions, um, let me know and I can do more videos like this. I'm trying to kind of figure out what you all want to watch. Um, so if you have other content suggestions, you can feel free to email me. You can feel free to leave a comment on the content, sorry, in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University. Mm -hmm.